What's up you guys, it's Chris here. A few months ago, my rear end went out and I had no idea how to repair it. I spent hours and hours looking for a YouTube video explaining the process and all I found is super long videos only showing bits and pieces or talking forever about the same topic. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to know when rebuilding a GM 10 bolt rear end. I'm gonna skip all the nonsense and give you lots of tips along the way to help get you through the process without needing a bunch of special tools. I start off by pulling both tires off and brakes apart. You don't have to pull the brakes apart, but I'm gonna replace the axle seals and I'll need the brakes out of the way to do that. I pop off the diff cover and remove the eight millimeter bolt holding the center pin in place. The bolt removed, the center pin drops right out. This allows the axles to be pushed inward to access the axle retainer. I'm able to work the retainer out with a screwdriver and rotate the axle so that the retainer can drop out. This allows the axles to be removed. Be careful when you're removing them not to damage the axle seals. Mark the carrier bearing caps before removing them so that they can be reinstalled on the same side and in the same orientation. You may have to use a pry bar, but with the caps removed, the carrier assembly can be removed. Remove the pinion nut and then remove the pinion by hitting the end of it with either an air hammer or a normal hammer. As you can see here, my pinion is trash, so I wasn't worried about damaging the end of it with the hammer. Knock the pinion bearing races out. I just used a 12 inch ratchet extension. Remove the ring gear bolts. These bolts are left-handed threads. I did not know this and snapped two of them off in the old ring gear before I realized. It doesn't really matter though because I have a new ring gear and new ring gear bolts. To remove the carrier bearings, I cut apart the bearing and cut most of the way through the inner race without hitting the bearing journal. A solid whack of the hammer shears the race the rest of the way, which makes it easy to pop off that inner race. Clean up any high spots on both the carrier and the ring gear with a file. I miss getting it on camera, but I put the carrier assembly in the freezer for a few hours and I put the ring gear in the oven set on 500 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. I set the hot ring gear up on these blocks and dropped the cold carrier down inside of it. It dropped right on and I was able to get a couple of the bolts snug. I let it cool before I torqued all the new bolts down. I used a bearing race driver tool to knock the new carrier bearings on. Ended up getting them most of the way, but had to use a press to get them fully seated. I rented a bearing splitter from the parts store to pull the old bearing off the bad pinion. This old pinion was about to lose another tooth, which probably would have been catastrophic for the rear end. I sand down the inside of the old bearing so that it drops onto the new pinion without needing to be pressed on. This is called a setup bearing and it's used to go on and off the pinion easily and add shims under it to help determine the correct number of shims that need to go under that pinion bearing when you do your final assembly. Moving back over to the truck, I drive in the new bearing races, install the new pinion with the setup bearings and without the pinion seal. Clean the housing one more time and install the carrier. After the carrier caps are installed, I check the pattern and backlash. The pattern looks decent, but I have about 40 to 50 thousandths of backlash. Guys, the key to dialing in the rear end is to shim your pinion forward and back to get your pattern centered on the ring gear and to shim your carrier left to right to get your backlash set correctly. So to take up some backlash, I remove some shims from under the right carrier bearing race and add them under the left carrier bearing race. That shifts the whole carrier assembly to the right closer to the pinion. Check the backlash again and I'm sitting around 15 thousandths. I check the pattern and it's a little bit towards the outside of the ring gear. To correct this, I remove the pinion, slide off the setup bearing and add a 10 thousandths shim to the back of the pinion gear between the gear and the setup bearing. Reinstall the pinion and carrier and check the backlash one last time. I'm sitting right at about 9 thousandths, which is pretty good. Check the pattern one more time. It looks pretty solid. This is the coast side and this is the drive side. So now I'm happy with the backlash and the pattern. This means that the pinion shims are correct and the carrier shims are correct. So I disassemble everything and prep for the final assembly. Remember to keep track of what shim stack goes where so that when you reassemble everything, they all go back in the same location and you have the same backlash and pattern as you did with all the setup bearings. Clean everything off really good before the final assembly. The shims, the bearing caps, the bearing races, the bearings themselves, the carrier assembly. For the final pinion assembly, I remove the setup bearing and put the new pinion in the freezer. I set the new pinion bearing on top of the wood stove. Making sure that my 10,000th shim is under the pinion bearing, I drop the new bearing on top of the pinion. With a little finesse, it drops right into place. 
Next, I apply some RTV on the new pinion seal. I put the front pinion bearing under the seal and tap the seal into place. Install the new pinion with a new crush sleeve on it. The crush sleeve is what gives the pinion bearings preload. Now it takes a lot of torque to get that crush sleeve to crush. My Harbor Freight pneumatic impact did not have enough torque, so I had to borrow a Milwaukee cordless impact. Tighten the pinion nut until you have around 15 inch pounds of rotational drag on the pinion. Install the carrier and shims. I found it much easier to get all the shims in place if you loosely install the bearing caps on one side while you tap the shims in on the other side. You want these shims to be a little tight and have to tap them into place. This is what gives your carrier bearings the preload they need to function properly. Before I torque the bearing caps down, I checked the backlash one last time and it's sitting right around six thousandths, which is right where I want it, kind of on the tight side. I also checked the pattern one last time. I'm no expert, but I believe this is kind of right where you want it. If anyone thinks otherwise, let me know in the comments. When I'm happy with everything, I add Loctite to the cap bolts and torque them all down. Before I close up the diff, I pop off the old axle seals. Clean out the mating surface, apply RTV to new axle seals, and tap them into place. I clean up the area on the axle that rides against the seal and clean the rest of the axle off. Next, I install the axles, being careful not to damage the new seals. Slip the axle retainers into place and push the axles out, locking the retainer in. Slide the center pin back in and install the 8mm pin retainer bolt. This wraps up everything in the differential, so I RTV the magnet back into place and apply a bead of RTV to the differential cover. Reinstall the cover and torque all the bolts to spec. Lastly, I reassemble the brakes and install the wheels and tires. Remember, when you're doing a project like this, it's important to keep everything as clean as possible and to follow the break-in procedure for the gears that the manufacturer recommends. The break-in procedure for these gears was to drive 10 miles, let everything cool for 30 minutes, and then repeat that three or four times. I really hope this helps some of you take on a project like this. Drop a comment if you have any questions or you think I messed up something. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.